two-stroke, 10-cylinder, double-row radial engine with five tiny superchargers. This is a homemade motorcycle by Czech enthusiast Marek Foltis, called the Best LF500. And it's not just a garage showpiece. It's a real, fully functional motorcycle that's street legal in Europe. It looks like a mechanic's blissful dream, like one of those dreams that stays very deep in your mind. But this is reality. It's practically the answer to the question, can I really do it? And in this episode, we'll take a detailed look at the entire process of creating this, without exaggeration, magical motorcycle. I'd be lying if I told you I'd never heard of this motorcycle before. Bikes like this never escape my attention. Having spent almost 10 years making videos about talented motorcycle enthusiasts and just rare, interesting bikes, I thought this was just another cool custom build by someone, but without much information, as is often the case. That was my line of thinking right up until Merrick himself emailed me on my English language channel, kindly providing materials for the story. This is my first time doing something like this. Thank you, Merrick. With your permission, I'll get started. And it's worth starting with the name. What does the word best ella mean? Radial engines, the concept Merrick uses in his motorcycle, are often called star-shaped engines. Stella means star in Latin. And the B is a prefix, like in B-Turbo. Simply put, the name clearly reflects the essence of the engine as a double star-shaped engine. If at first you weren't too surprised by this engine configuration, after all, we've seen a lot on this channel, then here's a photo of the stock motorcycle where Foltis managed to fit 10 freaking cylinders. Here's what Marek's original sketch looked like on paper. You have to admit, this is probably the most elegant implementation of 10 cylinders in a motorcycle. Foldy's original goal was to build something completely different, an engine with a unique design. And that's no easy task, considering the world has already seen a huge number of engine sizes and configurations. The situation is made even more complicated by the existence of so-called templates and formulas. They let you just swap out the numbers and get an engine in any known configuration. That's why Foltis decided to take an untrodden path, one without those templates, so he could design and think through everything himself. The next step was to implement two main ideas. The first was to have as many cylinders in the engine as possible, and the second was to make sure the finished motorcycle could be legally used on public roads. A radial engine is the perfect option for adding a large number of cylinders, although it's not the most compact option, given its large overall diameter. The motorcycle itself had to remain in factory condition, because modifying, for example, the frame would make it nearly impossible to get the paperwork for legal road use in the Czech Republic. The donor motorcycle chosen was a 1953 Jawa Peric. Obviously, it was never originally intended for a large engine with a huge number of cylinders. That's why the cylinders were borrowed from another Jawa. Specifically, from the Pioneer model, which has a single 50 cubic centimeter cylinder. After experimenting with 8, 10, and 12 cylinder designs, they settled on 10 cylinders arranged in two rows. And the brand managed to fit it into the frame with just a 1mm clearance. Brilliant. When I decided to build my own engine, I spent a long time searching online for something that no one had built yet. A lot has already been built, but I hadn't found a two-stroke radial engine yet, so I decided to go for this one. And if I were to basically rotate the cylinder horizontally, this dimension here would increase, and the decagon that basically forms the engine block would grow by about 5 centimeters in width. That means the cylinders would stick out further, and I wouldn't fit within the silhouette of the motorcycle anymore. And another thing, these front cylinders here could end up hitting the fender, which basically moves together with the wheel. Now, let's get to the most interesting part. The engine uses a single crankshaft with two main driving connecting rods and eight driven ones. This made it possible to arrange the star-shaped cylinders in two rows, slightly overlapping each other, which in turn allowed for a significant reduction in the engine's diameter and height, leaving room for a clever supercharger. After all, in a classic two-stroke engine, the mixture is supplied thanks to the vacuum created by the movement of the piston, and each cylinder has its own isolated crankcase. But here, the crankcase is shared by all 10 cylinders, and this method of filling the engine is simply impossible. 
Merrick solved this problem in a very interesting way. He installed five tiny Rutzatype superchargers, driven by a gear mechanism at the top of the engine, placing them in a single housing. This custom supercharger delivers a mixture volume of 830 cubic centimeters per engine revolution, which is more than enough. And each piston takes exactly as much mixture as its bypass valves are set for. And it spins up to 40,000 revolutions per minute. That's just incredible! To prevent the engine from overheating, the pistons and combustion chambers were coated with a ceramic layer. The engine crankcase, crankshaft, supercharger housing, and main connecting rods were manufactured on a CNC machine. All engine parts used are authentic, sourced from Jawa motorcycles. I can use standard pistons. Every part that's custom made is five times, sometimes even ten times more expensive. You have to wait for it, and there's a huge potential to make a mistake. Because mass-produced things have already been perfected. Anything you make as a one-off custom order, you never really know if you designed it perfectly, if you haven't missed something, or something like that. I haven't calculated everything for the engine, only the crankshaft has been calculated. For balancing, for strength. And the bearings and the rest of those parts have been checked. Initially, Foltis wanted to create a fuel system consisting of five carburetors. One for each supercharger. But it turned out that this setup was impossible to tune due to fuel leaks. After that, Merrick made a handmade intake manifold for a single carburetor, which worked just perfectly. In fact, the intake and exhaust manifolds consist of 17 parts and were given a nickname by their creator. He called it the Pipe Octopus. Designing and making it took a month of constant cutting and welding, and gave Merrick Carpal Tunnel Syndrome from the vibration of the grinder. But it was worth it. It looks amazing and unlike anything else. Bravo! The specs of such an interesting unit turned out to be just as exciting. The estimated power of the 500cc engine is 120 horsepower at 10,000 RPM. The total weight of the motorcycle is 150 kilograms, and its top speed reached over 220 kilometers per hour. That's really, really impressive. Regulations forced Merrick to first limit the power to 60 horsepower, and then eventually down to just 12. Which honestly makes sense, considering that modifying the frame and brakes wasn't allowed. By the way, it's kind of funny how the laws let you build a powerful engine at first, only to choke it later so it fits an outdated chassis. Now, the top speed is 100 kilometers per hour. Still, the question remains, which standard Jawa gearbox can handle 120 horsepower? The thing is, these motorcycles were often used in races back in the day, and Jawa even produced performance upgrade parts. You can still find these parts at flea markets. That's why the clutch cover here is different from the stock one. Behind it is an upgraded clutch. Merrick built the strongest possible gearbox from the available parts. The funny thing is, this was actually easier and cheaper than designing and making a custom gearbox. Even considering that these performance parts are like relics for Czech Jawa enthusiasts. You can only imagine how much they cost. And when it comes to power transmission, things are even simpler here. After all, at first glance, it's not clear how the horizontal and vertical parts are connected in this motorcycle. The lower part of the engine is specially designed to match the stock opening of the original cylinder. Then, a bevel gear located at the end of the radial engine's crankshaft meshes with a bevel gear installed on the horizontal shaft in place of the original crankshaft. The tests were carried out in Marek's signature durability check style. He blew up the engine five times. As Marek himself said, to get it started, you'll need magic, not science. Sometimes the engine cover would rupture due to insufficient clearances. Sometimes the supercharger drive shafts would jam the mechanism, sometimes the bevel gear would break, and so on.
But Foltis has a great metaphor about this. Quote, People are afraid of troubles and failures that arise when you want something valuable. Problems and failures are like dragons. They're scary. And yes, there are some pretty ugly dragons out there. But we're just people. So what are we supposed to do about it? Guess what? Knights are people too. People with huge swords and shining shields. In real life, willpower is your sword, and persistence is your shield. And with them, you can fight any beast you encounter on your journey. It's time to grab your swords, guys. 